Okay, let's continue on with our journey creating the regular polyhedrons, also known as platonic solids in creoparametric. In this video, I will be creating a dodecahedron, which is a 12-sided solid. And again, with the regular polyhedrons, all the edges are going to have the same length. And I'm basing this video off the webpage instructables.com forward slash CAD AD12. In other words, creating a 12-sided die like in Dungeons and Dragons. So anyhow, let me hit the new button to create my new part. And I am going to call this dodecahedron. And uh, let's append Creo 7 on the end of the name, just so that people know what version this was created in. I'm going to turn off the option for using my default template. I'm going to do this one in imperial units, in other words, in inches. All right, so that's good. Let me click the OK button. And I'm going to make this full screen over here, just a thing I like. All right, let me start out by turning on my plane display for a moment. And the first sketch will be on the datum plane called top. So let me select top and then go to the sketch command in the mini toolbar. I'm going to turn off my datum pl plane display. And now in the first sketch, we are going to drop in a pentagon. So I will go to the palette command and then the polygons tab. And then I will grab the five-sided pentagon and I'm just going to drop it right in here. And let me close out of there and let's see for the scale of this one. I'm going to use a scale of one. I'm going to make this with an edge length of one. Let me grab this and drop it right in the middle. I'll hit the check mark and zoom in on it. So this is good. I also need a couple of points for reference. And to create the first point, I will make a construction line. Let me go to construction mode and then hit the line tool. I'm going to make this and drag it. And I'm going to let it snap to being the same length as one of the sides of the pentagon. And so that is good for my construction geometry. Now I'm going to drop in a couple of points that I will use in the next sketch. And so here is the point command. I'm using the point command out of the datum group. I'm not using the point command out of the sketching group because I actually want this to create a point that I can use in the next sketch. All right, so I'll hit the point command and drop it right there. And then I need another one right at the middle of that line. So the sketch is good. I will hit the check mark. And there you can see the sketch and the two different points because I have my datum point display turned on. Okay, let's create our second sketch. Let me turn on my datum plane display for a moment. And this next sketch will be on the plane called right. So I will click on the plane and then hit the sketch tool. And let me turn off the plane display. And I'm not going to go to my sketch view just because I want to be able to see the different entities in here. And on the web page, they create all construction geometry. I'm going to create regular geometry, uh, regular lines and entities, just because they are easier to see. Okay, so in this particular sketch, the first thing that we are going to do is create a circle. So let me go to the circle command. And the first circle is going to go from the vertex over here. It's not snapping into it. Let me actually add that to my sketch references. I like adding my sketch references manually. That is good. Solve, close. And this time, let me use my right mouse button to get to my sketch tools for a circle. Snap in there and then snap into that point. That is good. And now for the next circle, it is going to be centered on this point and then go out to that one over there. So let me go to my sketch tools once more and snap into the point and then go over there. So you can see that this one is going to be bigger than the first circle. The next entities are going to be, essentially, it's going to be a hexagon, but I'm not going to use the hexagon out of the palette command because when you use these polygons, they're all going to have the same length. The hexagon that we want to create, four of the sides are going to be the same length, and the other two will be the same length. Uh, so I'm not going to use the regular 
uh, command. So let me go to the line tool. You're going to create a line from the tip of the pentagon all the way out to that midpoint of the base. And then the second line is going to snap into the circle over here. And let me just zoom out a little bit. Now we're going to make another one of the sides. And don't let it snap into that point over there. I'm just going to make it over here. So this is good. And then let's make a horizontal line. And I don't want to snap into that point over there. Oh, what, what's it snapping into equal? Yep, equal length. I want it to be equal to that. And let's see, the next line is going to snap into this circle and then snap into there. And so there we have our hexagon. We have a bunch of weak dimensions. So we need to add some stuff in here to make sure that everything is correct. So one thing that we need is for this line to be the same length as those lines. So let me go to the equal constraint. And I will pick this being equal to, well, essentially that first one over there. Uh, let's see. We also want this line to be equal to that line. And, oh, I see I've got a problem. Let me cancel out of here. Okay, so let's see. This line should not have this constraint. Let me get rid of that. Delete that one. Okay. Okay. So let's see, we want this line. This is going to be the same length as that one over there by definition uh, because they are radii of the circle. Let's see, we've got this one equal to that length and we want this one equal to that length. So now we can put in our equal constraint between this one and this one. So that's good. We can see that it adjusted and it also got rid of uh, some of the weak dimensions. And I like that we have weak dimensions here. If you're using Onshape or SolidWorks, they will change colors uh, when you have a fully constrained sketch. But me personally, I just like the weak dimensions. But anyhow, we need to make sure some stuff is parallel. So let me go to parallel, and I want to make sure that this is parallel to this. And okay, must have already been parallel because we are getting a conflict. And same thing, I just want to make sure that, uh, let's see, parallel, this, and this. Okay, good. Already was. So let me hit the undo button. And let's see some other stuff that we need in here. I am going to create a couple of horizontal lines. So let's go to the line tool. and Actually, not horizontal lines, but just connecting over here. And then from here to here. And let's see, the last one is we're going to make a line from this point to this one over here. So let's go to here to over here in middle mouse button. And let's see, we need this line. We need to make sure that this is perpendicular to that one over there. So let me go to the perpendicular constraint and pick this and this. And that is good. And so let's see, I still have a weak dimension. So that is a sign that one other thing needs to be corrected. Let me take a moment to think. Aha, oh yes, okay, now I figured it out. The whole point of this sketch is to find the point that we want to make a blend with. So I need to throw in the point and then constrain the point to be on this reference. That point is going to be the midpoint of this line. So let me grab the point command and I'll let it snap into the midpoint constraint. And now let's add a coincident constraint to put this point on this line over here. The weak dimension went away and everything is good. That point is what we want for everything. Just make things a little bit easier to see. Before leaving sketch mode, I can take a few of these lines and just turn them into construction lines just so that they will not be visible outside of the sketch. Again, I really could do it with everything, but uh, let's see. Let me just leave it at this. Okay, so I will hit the check mark in order to complete this. And now I am ready to create my blend. 
Let's go to the engineering overflow menu. Actually, the shapes overflow menu here is the blend command. And the first section is going to be the first sketch that I created. And then for the second section, we just want this point over here. Uh, and so I need to select a reference for where that should be located. And I can just select this point. And then let's choose the sketch button. And for the sketch, it is just going to be a point located on the point. So that is good. Let's hit the check mark. And you can see a preview of our blend that we are creating. I will hit the check mark from here. So that's good. Let me hide sketch two as I am no longer going to need it. And now at this point, in the instructions on the web page, they say, hey, do some patterns and do some mirrors. Basically, you're making the rest of the cube. At this point, is really just a grind approach. And so when I first did this, I did some patterns. I'll show you if you want to go that route. So I'm going to create an axis through the edge over here that I can use. Let me turn on my axis display. And now I'm going to do some axis patterns for the body. So let me select the pattern or excuse me, select the body and then go to the geometry pattern command from the mini toolbar. And I can use the right mouse button to change the pattern type to an axis pattern and then choose this axis. And then we're going to use angular extent of 360 degrees and three members. And then I will hit the check mark. And so this only creates two other additional bodies and you have to create an axis. And so you can use the pattern approach if you want, where you just keep on making more patterns of stuff until you end up having to do a mirror. For this one though, I'm just going to create a bunch of mirrors. I'm just gonna grind this out. So let me select the pattern feature and then delete it. And then I will select the body and then mirror it and then select a face to mirror about and hit the middle mouse button in order to create it. And I actually don't need this axis. Let me delete it. I'm not going to use it. Uh, and to just make this a little bit quicker even, let me use my selection filter to change to body. And I'll select this body and then use the mirror command in this face and then middle mouse button. I'm just gonna keep on doing that. Select the body, mirror, face, boom. And so, if you can think of an easier way to do this, please let me know in the comments because I'm just going to end up having to do this 11 times. And so for the rest of this, I'll just have this at a higher playback speed. All right, I've got all the different bodies created. Let's clean up the model tree a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna select the different mirrors, hold down the shift key and then group them together. And so now we just want one single body, everything merged together. So I will go to the Boolean operations command. It is set to merge. I'll modify body one. And then for the modifying bodies, I'll select body two. Hold down the shift key and select body 12. So I've got, got 11 modifying bodies and then hit the check mark. And so there we have one single body created and it is our regular dodecahedron. And that is the last of the videos I'll be making on the platonic solids. The only one I didn't create in a video was a cube. Hey, if you don't know how to create a cube in Creole Parametric, you should probably take a training class. Oh, and I forgot I am doing this video to support the MathCAD Community Challenge from May of 2024. So let me compute the surface area and the volume of this. I can collapse my bodies in the tree. Let me select the top node of the model tree and then I can right mouse click and edit materials. We go to legacy materials and I'll grab the steel, right mouse click, set as master, and then click the OK button. That's just so that I can compute the mass properties. I will go to the analysis tab and then let's click on the mass properties command. 
And let me change from quick to feature. Uh, let's see, for the coordinate system, let me select the default coordinate system. And you can see a preview of the results. Let me go to the feature tab. And we only need the volume and the surface area. And just to make it easier to create my annotations in a moment, let me change the name of the feature to something simple like mass and then click the OK button. All right, so that's good. Now I can go to the annotate tab and then click flat to screen to make my note. Let's create the note right about up over here. And so the first thing I'm going to report is the surface area. And then I'll type a colon. And so let's use the ampersand, which means go out to the model and extract a value. And the name of the parameter is surf underscore area. And then I will do colon FID, which stands for feature identification identification and you can either use the name of the feature or its feature ID number. I named it mass to be easy to remember. So let's type in mass and I want to make sure that I get three decimal places. So I will do an open bracket and then 0.3 and then a close bracket. Let's hit the enter key a couple times. Now for the volume. Once again, I'll do ampersand volume colon FID underscore mass. And then once again, let's do three decimal places and then deselect. Oh, I'm going to make this a little bigger so that we can see it. Oh, let me change my filter over here. Couldn't pick it. And that way I can change the height to something nice and big, like a value of eight. And so there you can see the volume and the surface area for a dodecahedron with an edge length of one.